committee. Uh, this is our first remote meeting and it is being held under the local authorities Coronavirus Meetings Wales Regulations 2020. I'd like to manage expectations from the outset and highlight that there may be some glitches in this meeting. However, please be assured that we will learn from them and keep striving towards a seamless process. I am also conscious that a number of the participants may have issues with bandwidth and would suggest that they turn off the video should that become an issue. It was not practical for this meeting to be broadcast live. However, the head of Democratic Authority is working on this and he hopes that this will be resolved. <coughs> a recording of this meeting shall be made available as soon as possible after the meeting is completed. So we will now go on to the agenda. I, agenda item one, apologies for absence, and I call on uh, Head of Democratic Services, Hugh Evans. Um, there are no apologies for absence. Thank you. We now go on to agenda item two, disclosures of personal and prejudicial interests. I will no, now call each of the members by name. Can you please state your name and outline any personal or prejudicial interests that you may have? Uh, for myself, Councillor Mary Jones, I have a personal interest. My daughter works for the NHS. Councillor Mike Dirk. Thank you. I didn't hear then, Chair. Sorry. Yeah, Councillor Mike Dirk, no interest to declare. Councillor Wendy Fitzgerald. No interest. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah, good. Councillor Louise Gibbard. Uh, yes, Councillor Louise Gibbard, no interest to declare. Thank you. Councillor Joe Hale. Yeah, personal. I'm an employee of uh, Swansea Bay Health Board. Councillor David Halliwell. Councillor David Halliwell, no interest to declare. Councillor Terry Hennigan. Councillor Peter Jones. Uh, yes, Councillor Peter Jones, no interest to declare. Councillor Erica Kirchner. Erica Kirchner. Councillor Wendy Lewis. Councillor Wendy Lewis, I have an interest to declare my daughter works for the NHS. Councillor Gloria Tanner. Councillor Will Thomas. Councillor Will Thomas, no interest to declare. Before I go on to the corporate members, I will go back to Councillor Cyril Anderson. Mm -hmm. uh, Councillor Anderson, we can see that you're part of the meeting. Perhaps your microphone is muted. If you would want to unmute and say whether you have an interest or not. Yeah, I was trying to send you a message, no interest uh, declared, but uh, yeah, no interest. <laughs> Just bear with us for one no, moment. Yeah, check. that's fine. Yeah. Right. Well, Councillor Gloria Tanner and Councillor Hennigan are not with us. Okay. Uh, Councillor Peter Black. I have no interest to declare. Yeah. Councillor Peter Black. Councillor Chris Holly. Councillor Hawley, if you could unmute to answer the question. Yes, sorry, I, uh, Councillor Chris Hawley, I have no interest to declare. Councillor Paxton Hood Williams. Councillor, pa <coughs> sorry, Councillor Paxton Hood Williams, no interest to declare. Councillor Lyndon Jones. <sighs> Councillor Lyndon Jones. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, Councillor Lyndon Jones, no interest to declare. Councillor Jeff Jones. Yes, Councillor Jeff Jones, personal interest. My daughter works at the NHS. Right. Cabinet members, Councillor Rob Stewart, you present? Yes, Chair, I'm present. No interest to declare. Uh, Officer Bill Roberts. 
No interest to declare, Chair. Martin Nichols. Martin Nichols, no interest to declare, Chair. Tracy Moreda. No interest. Is Ben Smith? Yes, Chair. Ben Smith present. No interest to declare. Hugh Evans. Hugh Evans, no interest to declare. Bridge Madahar. Uh, Bridge Madaha, no interest to declare. Alison Lowe. Alison Lowe, no interest to declare. Thank you. We now go on to agenda item three with the prohibition of votes and declaration of party wins. Any declarations? Agenda item four, public question time. We have had no public questions uh, submitted. So we will go on to agenda item five, which is the urgent item and it's pursuant to paragraph 100b, 4, small b, of the Local Government Act 1972, I consider that the Financial Procedure Rule 18.1c and FPL 7, authorization for alteration and conversion of Bay Studios, Fabian Way, Swansea, into a 1,000-bed surge hospital on behalf of the Swansea Bay University Health Board. Report should be considered at this meeting as a matter of urgency. The reason for the urgency is COVID 19 emergency build a hospital for Swansea Bay University Health Board, which ends in the 27th of April 2020. So there we go on to agenda item six, and I understand it's the leader is going to present the report, or is it Phil Roberts? Chair, I'll say a few words by preamble. I'll ask Martin Nichols then to go through the report in some in, in as much detail as he can, and then the leader Martin and I will attempt, uh, along with Ben Smith and Tracy, to answer any questions that you have. But if I if I could make a few opening remarks, these are interesting and challenging times for all of us, and I really should start by paying tribute to the work done by Martin Nichols and his team to design, procure and then develop a hospital in a month. Uh, it has been an astonishing achievement. I'm uh, immensely proud of them. Um, a month ago, the Welsh Government and the NHS shared their projections for the spread and impact of the coronavirus with us. Although this was prior to the introduction of social distancing, the original projections remain. And this was translated to us as a need for 1,300 additional beds in the Swansea Bay area. Two sites were identified by the local health boards, Tlang Darcy and Bay Studios. And we've been working closely in collaboration with the health board and our colleagues in Neath Port Talbot Council to deliver this requirement. And as the larger authority with greater capacity, we agreed to deliver the provision at the Bay Studios, even though it is not within the authority's boundary. The efforts to build the hospital are supplemented by a rapid, rapid hospital discharge programme to free up beds in Morriston and Singleton hospitals. And thanks to all of our staff who've been involved in that, it's another astonishing success uh, because if we fail to build this capacity for acute care, then it is likely that some of our citizens would die unnecessarily in the coming weeks. Uh, so I'm gonna hand over to Martin Nichols, who will take you through the report and then we'll answer any questions that the committee might have. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I hope I think we can hear me. Um, yeah, just going to take you briefly through the headlines of the report. And as the Chief Executive said, happy then to take any questions uh, at the end of that. Uh, members will be aware, as, as the Chief Executive said, for the reason uh, why the report is urgent, but just to confirm the two uh, constitutional issues under FPR 19.1c and FPR 7. Uh, this is because even though the uh, end payer of the hospital will be the uh, Swansea Bay Health Board uh, and then back the Welsh Government because the council is commissioning or being commissioned to undertake the project uh, it needs formally add into the council's programme. I'm not sure if there's any questions of detail on the financial aspects of that how section 151 officer can add those. Just to build a little bit on uh, what the chief executive has said uh, yes, there was projections and still are projections that a requirement of a minimum of 1,300 additional beds were required within the Swansea Bay University Health Board boundary. Um, 
The health board themselves undertook a site search, and that site search identified and reviewed a range of premises, uh, and those are listed within 2.1 in terms of headings, such as leisure centres, commercial units, and sporting facilities. And I'm sure members would be uh, fully aware of a number of buildings across Wales and the various, uh, uh, various buildings that have been used for this purpose, including Principality Stadium, uh, and other such uh, buildings. So there's a range of scale and size that uh, health boards across Wales have adopted. Uh, the Swansea Bay Health Board identified that their preference in terms of the locations within our area were Bay Studios on, Clanda uh, Bay Studios on Fabian Way and the Clandarcy Academy in East Talbot. Uh, I should just draw attention that why Bay Studios is slightly over the border in the Neath Portalbert area by agreement between Swansea and Neath Portalbert. Uh, Swansea Council took the lead on the Bay Studios development and Neath Portalbert Council took the lead on the Clandarcy Academy project. Those sites were uh, determined by the Health Board and then verified and reviewed by the military assessment team on behalf of the UK Government who have reviewed and approved all of these surge hospitals as being fit for purpose and fit for the use intended. Uh, following the site meeting, uh, it seems an awful long time ago, but it's not 30th of March when we then finalised on site the agreement with the health board representatives that the Elba building, which is a, a large uh, previous industrial unit at Bay Studios, uh, would be the chosen location by them. Uh, due to the time constraints involved, it was uh, impossible to go through a normal procurement process. So separately to this, the Council has gone through a contract award report to two appointed contractors, TRJ and Kias, who both have a track record within the region. Uh, I should add my thanks to them. They have been outstanding in their endeavours, working 24-7, almost from day one. Works physically commenced early April. Uh, on the 3rd of April, and it only, it seems quite, uh, 24th of April today, and the first handover of circa 400 beds together with all of the nurses' requirements um, and all of the uh, IT equipment, all of the uh, in uh, intake and discharge areas will all be completed and released as part of that first phase, with subsequent phases being released between that date and early June by agreement with the Health Board. The, the works involved, uh, which are set out in 2.6, probably don't do the scale justice, but effectively the building was a shell, um, and within that shell, a, effectively a brand new hospital building has been constructed uh, within a waterproof box. Uh, and within that, uh, as well as obviously the wards have to be done, a structural roof, new flooring, new roof, new ceilings, and then all of the mechanical and electrical equipment are situated on top of the roof of that new hospital being constructed within that existing building. So it's entirely contained within the, the existing asset. Uh, 2.7, uh, I'll draw your attention to that. Because of the type of, uh, the way in which the works have been both covered and undertaken, uh, a collaborative approach between the technical team who worked on behalf of the health board, the council who was acting as the principal contractor, and the two main contractors, Piers and TRJ, uh, have collaborated on the design to build something that uh, was fit for purpose, but also deliverable within the time constraints. And that has meant some compromises on specifications than what would normally be used purely to availability of materials and resources. Therefore, as a result of the accelerated timeline, uh, it has been impossible to determine a cost in advance, which would normally always be the case with a construction project of this nature. Uh, but the works are being done under a formal NEC contract, which is the standard package of contracts the Council would use, on a cost reimbursable model, so effectively an open book approach where the contractors will disclose the full cost for carrying out and they will then receive a nominal percentage addition for their uh, overheads and profit. So it's, it's effectively then an open book approach uh, and the, the health board ultimately pay what the job then costs. 
clearly working 24 7 through bank holidays etc that cost would be higher than would normally be in the case but that's a balance between the urgency at which the project needed to be delivered uh, just draw attention to 2.8 uh, one of the things that was very apparent on day one there were uh, there was a requirement for emergency provisions to dispense with the normal planning requirements that would have needed to take place, which would have required a change of use of that building. Um, that allowed the council to be able to uh, adapt the building into its new form. Um, the timescale for that, as I understand in the legislation, is up to 12 months. So it's a temporary relaxation um, within the, uh, under the permitted development category. Um, and because the project is situated in East Port Albert, whilst no formal process of uh, approval is required, uh, myself uh, contacted the Head of Planning Services of the East Port Albert, registered the intention as to what we were doing, and that effectively triggers that exemption to allow us to adapt the building for the purpose intended. The financial implications I've referred to, we will only know the full cost close to our act completion. So there's, that is why there is a range within the report of between 10 and 50 million that if for any reason we expect or anticipate the cost to rise above that, then we will clearly notify cabinet and others as required. Uh, but we would be more than happy to publish the final cost figure when the works are fully complete and all the invoices have been paid. Uh, just under the legal implications, the, the site is owned by Welsh Government and leased primarily to Roy Thomas, uh, but also a section of it is in conjunction with Uni University of Wales, Trinity St. David, who had taken on part of that building for a new scaffolding training centre, and they've been happy to release that as part of the scheme. 12 month lease is being agreed between those parties. It was initially a thought that the council would take on the lease, but it was determined that it would be better if the lease was between the parties directly and the council would be granted a license to carry out the works. On completion of those works, uh, the building is handed over to Swansea Bay Health Board. The council is undertaking the insurance of the works um, during the construction phase only. And then again, once handed over, the insurance reverts back to the building owners. So if I may therefore just summarize and just take you back to the recommendations. The recommendations of the report which will take, um, which are requesting that to allow us to add the project to the council's capital program under FPR seven, and also to the emergency under nineteen point one c. Finally, I should just mention, I'm sure our, uh, our section one five one officer will also come in on this point. Um, the council is doing this because it, it needs to identify this route to be able to allow the expenditure formally to take place. It is fully expected that the full amount of the expenditure will be duly recovered from the health board. Um, and you will see at Appendix A, there is a draft collaboration agreement which sets out the principles of that agreement. That draft form has been shared with the health board uh, and subject to cabinet approval on Monday. The intention would be is to delegate the responsibility for finalising that and all other agreements to the parties that are set out or the officers and members that are set up within recommendation two and then three. Um, that's the summary of the presentation of the report, but I and I'm sure other officers and the cabinet member are happy to take any questions. Okay, I think the leader wants to say something next. Leader? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I'd like to obviously add my um, uh, congratulations and thanks to all the teams that have been working incredibly hard over the last few weeks to create this. I mean, the, the reality is they've been on site a little under three weeks now and uh, what they've achieved is remarkable. I've asked the chief executive if he will share some images which you should be seeing on your screen at the moment. Um, but it, even though these are um, uh, uh, images which are really helpful in showing what's being created, they do not do what is their justice. The scale of it is enormous. Uh, uh, I know I went round with the, the group leaders this morning and you're looking at over 100 wards currently being created there. Uh, as Martin said, um, over 400 uh, to 500 bed spaces already available uh, for health to, to um, uh, take uh, ownership of next week. It, it's been, a, it's, I've said uh, publicly, it's been what I consider to be a wartime effort. 
I've never seen anything like this. Um, and, you know, we should be really proud of the efforts that our staff and the contractors have made in this uh, um, in this endeavour. Um, we, we obviously are building to the spec of the health board and to the request uh, for what the modelling for this area uh, determined was likely to be the surge that the health board would have to deal with. Now, I hope, I'm sure, like everybody else, that we don't have to use all of the provision that's there and that the social distancing and other measures that have been put in place will help us avoid that tsunami. But absolutely, it is the right thing to do to provide this um, facility so that if we get a bigger peak um, or we get many peaks, because that is still a, an option in the, in the modelling, then we have uh, provided the health board with sufficient capacity to help deal with that. Um, the, the final thing I, I would say is, of course, if you look at the other um, surge hospitals or field hospitals that have been created around the country, many of them, if not all of them, are temporary facilities, uh, either in uh, marquees or, or other uh, temporary buildings or, or structures uh, with only um, minimal um, ward uh, created, uh, sorry, ward structures created to, to house patients. Um, I'm sure that the, the other leaders who visited this morning will, will confirm what we have created, as Martin said, was a building within a building. And uh, I guess one of the uh, discussion points that will need to happen very soon is um, this building has the potential to outlast the crisis um, and therefore how the Health Board and Welsh Government wish to use this facility after the uh, crisis has passed, uh, I think will be an important uh, decision to be made because it it certainly provides over a thousand beds uh, extra to the health board in this area and I hope they're able to use that long term. That's all from me chair thanks but happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much leader and I'd like to our, our thanks on the speaking program committee to all the work that everyone has done over this uh, pandemic and just hope that uh, we can get to it and come back to what is going to be the new normal as they keep telling us. So I've had three indications so far of people that want to ask questions. Uh, the first one is Councillor Chris Holly. Councillor Holly, you are oh, sorry. Yeah, I just realised that. Uh, um, can I say thank you, thank you, uh, and good afternoon to everyone. Can I say that uh, I went over to the um, facility this uh, this morning uh, as a leader. I had um, incredibly impressed with the amount of work that's been done in the period of time. Um, the quality of what's there is as good, if not better, than in many of the current hospitals that we have in the area. And uh, I think it is a fantastic facility. Uh, as the leader said, the question was asked, what's going to happen after this pandemic is over? And you know that as soon as possible and just hope that not many of the beds are used in that facility, but it's there. And uh, I think, you know, because it's the, the spend of 15 million pound or upwards of 15 million pound of public money, I think the question about what it's going to be used for afterwards is an extremely important question. I'm afraid I don't think that any of our officers, and I don't think the leader can answer that question. I think that's a question that, as a council, we have to ask not only Area Health Board, but we have to also ask um, the ministers, what are they going to do afterwards? But, you know, the, as for the report, the, the report is as it is. We, are, we have to respond. And I think we've done an absolutely superb job in responding. And I think at some stage, a public thanks, not just for the council staff, but every single person that's been on that site. You know, it has been superb. And I, and I fully endorse the actions of what's happened. Thank you, Councillor Holly. Uh, Councillor Peter Black. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chair. Um, can I first of all echo what Chris has just said? I think there's been an absolutely tremendous effort on behalf of everybody, particularly the staff of the of Swansea and the, and the authority and, of course, the members who've, who've taken the lead on this. And clearly we, we've um, performed miracles in such a short space of time. I've just got two lines of questioning, really. Um, obviously, because of the speed of having to do this, there hasn't been much of an opportunity to consult with local residents about, the, about this going in. But I understand there have been issues with lorries trying to access the site via Crumlin Burrows 
rather than via Ford Amazon. I'm just wondering, have we now got signage in place to stop that happening? Thank you. Um, yes, there, there were signs already there. Uh, we did have uh, um, some concerns passed over to us by the Chief Executive, Neith Patel, but uh, we responded the same day and erected further signage. We'd also instructed all of the delivery and suppliers to be mindful of the correct exit. Uh, and once we'd received a complaint, then that was reissued uh, with, with further signage. So I, I believe we've done everything we can. Um, unfortunately, yes, a few of the lorries did go the wrong way, uh, but we have done our best to correct that and make sure that doesn't arise again. I think you find that um, sat-navs sat take the wrong way when you put the postcode in. It, it always directs you via Crumlin Burroughs rather than Ford Amazon, so it might be worth mentioning that to them as well. The second issue in terms of finance, um, I understand we're getting all the capital costs back, but are there any revenue costs falling on the authority? Uh, um, particularly in terms of maybe borrowing the money for upfront in the first place, um, and of course staff time, and will we will we be, will we be reimbursing that money as well? If, if, if I take the first part, then perhaps uh, Ben would be able to answer the second part. In terms of ongoing revenue, it's not intended uh, to have any ongoing revenue cost to the council. There are some, there will be some ongoing involvement, and of course there will be an overlap whilst works are still ongoing. Uh, and potentially the hospital is in use. So the health board, for example, are responsible for picking up all utilities costs, etc. We are looking at an agreement between Swansea University and the health board around catering, so to provide the food for patients and staff. Uh, that's still being discussed at the moment as to whether the council would act as a go-between on that. Uh, that hasn't been finalised yet, but if it was and the council was to effectively pay the university, it would then be on a straight recharge basis automatically straight back to the health board. And finally, we have offered the opportunity to the health board, which they uh, appear to be keen on taking up, that we are prepared to carry on and undertake any maintenance or repairs that are required to the building for the duration of the 12 months. Some of those may well be minor defects that you would normally pick up as part of the normal defects liability period. But as it's within an existing building, if, for example, there was a roof leak, etc., then what we've said is we, along with the contractors, would attend to that immediately and then just recover the cost on a, on a full recharge basis. I expect that to be quite limited costs. Certainly don't expect it to be an ongoing significant revenue cost that we would need to report formally to council. Thank you. Uh, ben, do you want to add anything? Thank you, Chair. Yes, first of all, following on from what Mr Nichols has said, any incidental revenue, direct revenue costs, and I expect them to be incidental, would be, in my opinion, eligible to be reclaimed against the three offers of revenue grant support, the COVID-19 grant support, the social care support, and the Barnet consequential additional £95 million. In terms of the financing of the capital spend, because I am financing it on a both short-term basis and I'm proposing it is fully funded from the capital equalisation reserve, I am not having to go out and externally borrow a single further penny and therefore I do not expect any capital financing costs. The report makes clear that if for any reason there were not to be reimbursement, there could be a consequence. But this is done on the basis of me using the council's financial muscle to be able to assist the health board and the wider public sector. We're in the fortunate position of having cash, having cash flow and having reserves the capital equalisation reserve being 100% cash backed. And so I can give Peter Black, Councillor Black, the assurance that in the short term, there is no need for any financing um, externally. And if we are reimbursed in short order, there'll be no long term requirement for any financing. Thank you very much. Chair. Can, can I just ask one more question, Chair, if that's OK? Uh, in terms of the, the, the lease, um, it says in the report there's a 12 month lease between, I think it's between the health authority and the only the, the main leaseholder at the site, Roy Thomas. Do we know about the terms of that lease? Is there a, a cost involved in that lease, um, a payment to Roy Thomas for that lease? Do we know anything about that? No, no we wouldn't have access to that. As I, as I mentioned, I think earlier, there, there was an original in, intention for the council to undertake the lease. The reason for that was when the, uh, when the, um, uh, the order sorry, permission to undertake the works and the permitted development came out. It only extended those uh, permissions to local authorities. It didn't actually extend those permissions to the health board. 
And one of the things that needed to be in place to allow the uh, permitted development to be uh, approved was ownership or control of the asset. So we did draft initially lease terms, which were very much on a uh, on rent type basis. It wasn't a, a sort of full commercial rent, and it was a, quite a simplistic lease that was around uh, using it for this purpose and then returning it to the original use at the end of that. Um, so that was why we were looking originally developing a lease. Once the uh, legislation change had extended those permitted development rights to the health board, there was no real benefit of a council continuing to be involved in this, and it would have meant that we would have had an ongoing financial liability through that lease provision, which we didn't think was appropriate, and it also made it complicated around the insurance provision during that period as well. So we stepped back for that. The parties have got the draft copy of our lease. If they choose to use that as a basis for their own agreement, it, it is a matter between them, uh, but it isn't something that the council needs to or should have an input in. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Chair. Sorry, who's, who's trying yeah, to speak? Yeah, you, you broke up a bit then, I couldn't quite. Yeah, I, I agree with the Chief Executive. We live in extraordinary times at the moment. And I, I've got to say, I, I uh, endorse what Chris Orley and Peter Black have said. You know, it's been an exceptional job to get this up. I was going to ask about the spec, but uh, Martin, I think, has answered that with regards to a coordinated effort between. The local authority, health board, and so on. Um, I know some of the points have actually been raised with regards to the finance. Um, I, I just wanted to clarify in my mind the FPR 7 document, it's that even though it is a remote possibility that we could end up, you know, actually bearing the costs, but the collaboration agreement actually states the health board assumes responsibility. You know, which one is right at the end of the day? Is it the health board? Is it guaranteed that the health board will actually pay this at the end of the day? And if they will, how quickly are they going to reimburse us for the cost that we bear? Thank you, Chair. Um, as as Councillor Jones uh, has raised, I mean the the point of decision today in front of scrutiny for recommendation to cabinet on monday is we are making the spending decision today and that is why it's it's set out in the context of an fpr7 report and full cost and full coverage of the cost by ourselves it is indeed my expectation that the health board will be bound by the collaboration agreement but it is unusual um, arrangements because clearly um, normally schemes of this size of capital nature are subject to a bidding process and approval process. I have no reason to doubt the health board will not reimburse, but I'm just being extremely cautious in setting out all of the facts in front of you. I do not know the timing. I did also wish to just ask, add, Chair, that in response to Mr Nichols' earlier uh, advice, not only is it convenient for us to structure it this way for insurance purposes, it is also extremely convenient for us to structure it this way for value-added tax purposes to protect the authority's interest. Sorry, can I, can I just ask as well with regards to, I, I think you mentioned about early repayment earlier as well is there some sort of agreed process that's going to be put in place that they will reimburse us within a certain time chair again we haven't yet engaged with a specific time frame with the health board i am working on the basis it will all be done within a year these things are moving at rapid pace and will require agreement with welsh government as the asset owner and the health board to agree suitable cash flows it is an unknown at this point in time and that's the reason for adopting a very belt and braces approach in terms of my advice under fpr 7 and fpr 19. okay many thanks any more questions Councillor jones are there any other councillors that wish to ask a question? Uh, yes, Chair. So, okay. who, who might? That was L Lyndon Jones. Right, Councillor Lyndon Jones. Yeah, great. Well, could, uh, as the leader mentioned, we visited the site this morning, and uh, I, we all, I know, were extremely impressed. <laughs> With the high quality of what you could deal with the actual and I just want to thank Lyndon. everybody involved with yeah. You're 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 breaking up off. 
Can I suggest you turn your video off and ask the question again? Okay, okay. Uh, hang on a sec. Oh, God. No, that's not good. Oh, hang on. Uh, one sec. It, it will look like a little camera, a little square with an art with this, with a um, triangle pointing towards it. Okay, we're going to try and ask the question now. Perhaps you stop breaking up on us. You've muted yourself now, Councillor Jones. I know the leader wants to come back in. Peter Jones. Peter Jones. Yeah, they're all coming in now. Yeah. Yeah. Peter Jones, yeah. yeah. Peter right. Jones, Rob Stewart. I'd like Linda. Um, Councillor Linda Jones, you've muted yourself. I suggest you. I've unmuted him, but he's frozen. I would go to you. Right. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, look, uh, uh, firstly, um, I, it was remiss of me not to uh, welcome Councillor Jones back as well. I, I know he's had a period of ill health and I'm sure we're all pleased to see him back. Um, so, so uh, just passing on my best wishes. In terms of uh, the um, uh, the decision on the finances, as as Mr. Smith has said, whilst we've done everything we possibly can, given, given the time scales. Sorry, Liam, because we're having difficulty with Councillor Lyndon Jones. I I'll moved it. I'll, I'll we've moved it to him now, so if you can carry. Okay. On. Sorry. No, I was going to say, as Mr. Smith has said. No, Hello, I'm... can you hear me now? Yeah. We yeah, will the, call him in a minute, Councillor Jones. Okay, as I was saying, Mr. Smith has uh, made it clear we've done all we can to put in place a an agreement with the health board um, to give us security in terms of the uh, paying the bills. But again, I just want to remind people of the context here. You know that this uh, is a response to a pandemic crisis. Um, we are not operating in normal. Um, times and money was not the issue here. Saving lives was the issue. Getting the hospital built was the issue. Providing the beds was the issue so that we could help the health service save lives. So I fully respect uh, Councillor Jones's uh, his, uh, questions on, on finance, but I just want to be clear that people get the right context here. We're still in the middle of a pandemic and getting this facility built quickly is the most important thing we could do. Right, Councillor Lyndon Jones, try again. I can't unmute. Councillor Lyndon Jones, if you could unmute yourself and try your question again. Yeah, he's not, he's not picking up on chat. Uh, Councillor Lyndon Jones, there you are. No, you're still on mute, Councillor Jones. Hello, have you, you got are. me? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, I, 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 I'm not according to my screen. No. Just speak. Hello? Yes. Hello, yeah, right. Uh, can you hear me? Sorry, yeah, I wasn't on mute. I think I got a, it's, a, it's coming up. I've got a very, very, um, the, um, the leader mentioned we visited this morning. I'd also like to say what a fantastic dog our team uh, have, have, have done. I couldn't get over. The high quality of the of the work that had been achieved, but also the scale of the site and the scale of the work is absolutely magnificent. And yeah. actually, you know, that it, it's used properly afterwards, and we can use it for the benefit of the health service. Sorry, Councillor Lyndon Jones, you're still on again. It's the it's the signal. We're saying poor network. Well, you shouldn't have looked so far. <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I suggest you turn your can I suggest that you you perhaps move to a room near closer to your router? It's, that, I'm, I'm I'm opposite the router. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I I actually you know where where the house is it's down in the dip and it's a very poor signal uh, at all times really. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Always turn the video off to increase your bandwidth. Right, I've I've um, I've, I've turned the videos off on the thing. 
Um, yeah, no, I was going to say, I, what I said was the leader mentioned that we visited this morning. And I have to say, uh, I was seriously impressed with the high quality of the, of the work that had been achieved, but I couldn't get over the scale of the site. It is absolutely enormous. And the work that's been done in, 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 in a matter of weeks is, is absolutely fantastic. And I just hope that uh, we'll be able to benefit with, 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 uh, with that site after the, uh, uh, this pandemic is behind us. I appreciate the fact that the point that Jeff made about the uh, Councillor, Councillor Jones made, I think, uh, um, I think it was a question of delivering a hospital at this stage, which, which is vitally important. Okay, thank you, Councillor Lyndon Jones. The next speaker is Councillor Peter Jones. Thank you, Chair. All these Joneses, there are four of us, is getting rather confusing. Um, but be that as it may, I hope this isn't a silly question uh, to ask. But of course, we're talking about a 12 month development period. And given the uncertainty concerning the future of the infection and the considerable likelihood, in my judgment, that there will be a resumption, an upward spike, shall we say, as we move into the winter and spring of 2021. Uh, what will be the position if it's found that the facility is needed beyond March 31st next year? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I can answer part of that. The, the two parts I can answer is firstly, the lease that's been arranged, we understand, is for 12 months. Uh, now, of course, parties to the lease can always choose to extend that lease if they if they choose uh, so choose. Uh, and the the permitted development exemption in the planning legislation is also, as I understand, for a period of up to 12 months. I assume when Welsh government made that, they identified that was the longest period when they passed that legislation. They expected any building that's being used on this temporary basis to be required for. Um, I would imagine that if it was required for a longer period than that, then that could quite easily be extended and updated. Uh, clearly, the matter as to whether the building would still be available after the end of that 12 months would be between uh, the, the owners of the building. But bear in mind that Welsh Government own the actual asset uh, and lease it to uh, primarily Roy Thomas. I wouldn't have thought there would be uh, an issue in extending it further. And I would imagine that I couldn't see a reason why any of the parties wouldn't agree to that. But it isn't a matter the council can make a decision on this. OK, thank you. Uh, Phil Roberts, I think you have a point to make. Yeah, I think it's a good question from Councillor Jones, because I sort of share his um, concern that what the flattening has done is just shift peaks into a different place. Uh, so there is a, a likelihood that we will need uh, a longer term uh, vision for the hospital and in any case I think the point that the leader was making uh, about uh, whether or not this resource on a national level given all the other hospitals the, the field hospitals have other uses this resource might be a more permanent resource uh, and that's something that we will be I know the leader has had some discussions about that but we'll be discussing it in detail with the Welsh Government and the local health board um, because it, hospital capacity is always an issue, even though we've managed rapid discharge this time round, it's a perennial problem. So uh, I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a fair point. Uh, I don't think it will be beyond our, all of our wits to negotiate an extension should it be required, because the interests of the parties uh, are all aligned in this particular moment. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Chair. So one, one additional point on that, just, uh, just to mention, the, the, the people have mentioned the scale. To give you an indication, the inside area is the equivalent size of three full-size professional football pitches. That gives you an idea of scale. When you see, for example, the Millennium Stadium, etc., the, the scale of this is, is, is enormous. However, it has been constructed in a way where it can quite easily be split into uh, phases, both phases in terms of handover, so the first phase being circa 400 beds, but subsequent phases to that. So if there was a desire to use it on an ongoing basis or even a long-term basis, it could be flexed within the existing building to use as much or as little that is required. That is one of the benefits in the way it's been, it's been constructed on a, a modular basis with standalone heating and ventilation systems 
and fire breaks at those key uh, aspects at each of the junctions of the main phases. So that flexibility does exist for the future use as well. Thank you very much, Martin. Uh, Councillor Joe Hale. Councillor Hale, do you know unmute yourself? Ah, oh, there you are. I'm unmuted. <laughs> um, yeah, well, just, just a serious note. Um, it's really good to see um, a thousand beds uh, come back into the um, the health economy in South West Wales, albeit through a pandemic. And it would be absolutely fantastic if if we could keep this hospital facility uh, permanently. Um, because I think there's a lot of us that argued over many, many years that we should never have lost uh, so many beds. I don't take away from an absolute fantastic job uh, that the guys have got done down there. Uh, but my one question to the leader is, is um, has Swansea Bay Health Board actually discussed uh, their recruitment strategy uh, for these 100 beds with the local authority? Uh, yeah, Th thanks for that, uh, the hail. Yes, we, we're in constant uh, contact with the health board. We, we have uh, uh, meetings at several levels with them uh, each week. And part of the planning of, of this whole health system has been how these hospitals are uh, staffed. Um, should they be used or need to be used? So the health board will be looking at both redeployment uh, and uh, use of additional resources to, to man that hospital. We have um, appointed between us, both Neil Talbot, Swansea and the health board itself, uh, appointed uh, ex-chief executive Jack Straw, uh, one of the, the lead officers coordinating some of the responses between health and social care. So again, uh, those conversations are going, but uh, just to be clear, this is a health facility, health will man it. Um, we will obviously have a link in there in terms of discharge into our social care facilities where that is required. Um, but yes, certainly, Councillor Hale, those, those discussions have gone on within the health board. Thank you. I think the Chief Executive wants to say something as well, Phil. Uh, it's all right, Chair. The, um, the lead has pretty much covered it. We, we um, have recruited uh, the bad penny that is <laughs> Mr Jack Straw. Um, to help us because he's had experience on both sides of the fence. Now, he's got a number of work streams at operational and, and strategic level, which tie all these different uh, areas in together. So, quite rightly, Councillor Hales pointed out, effectively, there's no point in having a hospital if there's no one to actually staff it. So, that's been done in a similar way to, to the way that we've um, staffed additional social care provision. Uh, we've, rec we've got 100 extra pairs of hands for, to cope with the loss of up to 25% of our existing staff due to the virus and the health board are doing the same thing. So it's a combination of making sure you've got the right numbers of staff, the right level of personal protective equipment, the right level of ventilators and oxygen supply and the right building. And that was the uh, principal, but not only reason that we, we brought Mr. Straw in to make sure that all these things ha happen simultaneously. Uh, Phil. Is there anybody else that would like to ask a question or make a comment? Mary, can I just come back in? Yes, Joe. Yeah, it, it's just um, what, what, what's a real concern, I suppose, is that the last few years we, we've sort of been closing wards, closing services because we've had a lack of doctors and a lack of consultants and a lack of specialists. So that that the a real concern during the pandemic then, that we do get that right quality of staff coming through the doors. And that's more, more a comment than, than, than a question to anything. Thanks very much, Doug. Chair, sorry, could I, could I just come back in? There was one more thing I meant to say. It is of some concern to all health boards that during the pandemic, normal surgery and elective surgery uh, is being uh, reduced and as a consequence the health board are anxious that there is provision to uh, make sure those people with potentially life-threatening or uh, life-inhibiting illnesses 
uh, also get access to health services. So we, we, we are talking to you at the moment about this hospital as if it's in a, a coronavirus hospital. I think the real point is um, it's not um, the, the whole health service estate has got to cope not just with coronavirus, but people who have strokes, cancer, heart attacks, etc. So that's why the provision is so important to expand the provision now. Right, this is the final uh, time I'm asking, has anyone else got a question for any of the officers or the leader? Okay, well, I'll hand over to you now to say something. Hi. Um, the, the scrutiny program committee are now going to go into hotel deliberations. So can I ask Councillor Rob Stewart, uh, um, Martin Nichols and Phil Roberts to remove themselves from this uh, chat, please? Yes, thank you, Chair. Thank you very much for taking part and making this free today. Let me just check who's on there. Oh, I'm Ben, yeah. sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm Ben, sorry, Ben. Let me just double check who's on there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ben. Thank so I've got, um, let me just double check who's on there. Yeah, they, they've all seemed to have left, all four. So you are now without those four. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we need to do a letter, as we normally do for Cabinet. Um, I'm not sure if the letter is probably just going to be read out. I don't think I'm going to take part in remote access. Um, so uh, I just need people's comments, what we want to put in the letter. Um, Bridge and Simon Bridge has been taking notes while people have been speaking. But I think the first thing on the letter will be to thank everybody because we need to make sure that is recorded when it goes to cabinet. So Bridge, have you been able to make notes and um, is there anything that we need to highlight that you've uh, picked up? Thank, thank you Chair. Uh, so yes, I have been uh, listening attentively in the background, um, making a detailed note of everything. Uh, but of course, it's the, it's the main issues that you want to communicate uh, specifically and bring to the attention of Cabinet. So obviously I recorded uh, lots of praise uh, and endorsement of the recommendations. Um, obviously, I've noted some of the um, some of the questioning, obviously you had some responses, so it may well be something just to reference quickly in the letter, um, not necessarily requiring any action. Um, obviously there's some concern about the um, the future, uh, you know, what happens beyond the 12, 12 months, so I think that seems to stick out a bit more than the other aspects, but of course the other aspects include the financials, um, etc. So um, that they're the main things that I've recorded, so obviously if there's anything else um, that uh, needs to be said to Cabinet in the, for, in the letter, then of course um, please uh, take a moment to think about that and uh, and say so but in the usual fashion um i will be drafting something and obviously working with yourself and the other members to uh, to finalize that uh, uh obviously get that sent across to the cabinet uh, prior to their meeting um on monday thank you chair thank you uh, Councillor Peter Black, you want to make a comment yeah thank you chair um just wanted to say could we add into the letter that as more clarification becomes available on the financial aspect particularly revenue funding impact on the capital program that we have a further report back to committee okay, thank you. anybody else got any comments Okay. Yeah, I, I I agree with Peter. Really, you know, uh, even though you know, it's, I, I know we're actually saving lives here. Yeah? You know, finance does come into it. It plays a big part of the, so uh, it's an important part of the letter, I think. Okay, thank you. The cabinet. Can, can I ask a question? Can I make a yes. comment, Barry? Um, the only the, the one thing I would like is that we put in the letter that once the um, once the minister in Cardiff has decided and and the health board that members are informed about the future use of the facility because um you know having spent all this money on it and what have you i think it's important that we are told what the future use is as soon as possible okay thank you anybody else uh, can I just say, Chair, can I just add one thing? It's Councillor Mike Dirk, it is. 
Can yeah. I just endorse what uh, Councillor Holly said then, and what has been alluded to a few times? Uh, this has been a gargantuan effort by public services with public money, so we need to see public benefit coming from uh, any future use of this facility, its fixtures, fittings, and equipment. I just I know that's in there already, but that needs to be really a very very important point that we uh, we reinforce and keep an eye on. Okay, thank you very much. Anybody else? Right, the cabinet meeting is at 10.30 on Monday, so obviously the letter has to be finalised uh, over the weekend. So can I ask you, uh, when Bridge sends out the, uh, you know, the draft of the letter, if uh, you're making any comments, please uh, respond to all, reply to all, and please look out for the email, because obviously we're uh, very time constrained and we want to make sure that we have uh, caught the actual essence of the meeting. And I thank you all very much for attending this. It has made history in Swansea. Um, we had a few teething problems. Good job we started early, but I'm sure going forward we'll get far more used to it and uh, go and enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Thank you very much. You can leave the meeting. <laughs> Thanks, so.